it's a real pleasure to be here. It's a privilege, actually. I, I was always a keen reader of Pass Forward, but couldn't come to meetings, living 185 miles away. But then Zoom came along and YouTube, and the result has been, been fairly regular at meetings and catching in, ca catching up with what's been going on in society. Uh, and that's been a tremendous joy, it really has. I'm very grateful to Claire Kenyon for her support and for the way in which she responded so positively when I said, I wouldn't mind giving a talk um, at the society. I did that very diffidently because um, I wasn't sure you'd want to talk like this, but I hope it's something that goes well this evening. Um, you've heard a bit of my brief personal history, just to say that I, I was born in, in Billinge Hospital, now gone, um, 1942. And you're allowed to say, he doesn't look it. Would you mind saying that? Um, good. Thank you very much. It's a bit, a bit slow, but uh, thank you very much for saying it. Um, and lived along the road from Billinge Hospital all my childhood and teenage years. Went to St. James's Road County Primary School, or all then to um, Apollo Grammar School, both of which had now changed their names, one Newfold School and one Winstonley College. And then, as um, you heard, went to Leicester to study French and lived in France for a year, and then to Leeds to study theology, and um, never got back to Wigan. I went to university totally convinced I would settle back in Wigan. Um, th there was no other thought in my mind but to do that. I didn't do it then. Then I went to Leeds and thought, well, I may get back to Wigan. I never did. And the result is um, working in London, Bristol, and now the last 30 years I've been involved in the review of medical research, the ethical review of medical research, including COVID research in the last year or so. Um, and the committees I've chaired are in Cambridge and London. And all my family is now in London or south of England and Australia. So we are a bit scattered, but not around the Wigan area. Um, I'm here tonight with my wife, who is a non-Wiganer. <laughs> Do you mind? I, you know, I just, I thought I'd better get, better get permission for that. But, uh, but wait, wait, we're getting on to that in a minute. But um, St. Helens, I may well just mention briefly in a moment. Um, and um, my sister who lives in Parbold and a friend uh, who's come with her. Um, and let me begin with, also with a disclaimer. I am not a scholar or a researcher. I am in total awe of those who speak to this society and research so thoroughly. Um, I just bow in admiration to your, our chair, Derek Winstonley in Chicago, for the tremendous amount of interesting research he does on our town. Uh, notice I keep calling it our town, all right, and I will keep doing that. And over the last few months, I've thoroughly enjoyed the talks on Eckersley Mill, Timber Lakes, Jaira Chapel, Cockyham, of course. Um, a disputed election, I enjoyed that one. A vicious murder, I enjoyed that one too, and a few others. Um, and I cannot compete. They were all brilliant. Tonight, these are reflections, you might even say musings or ramblings, based on my lifelong fascination with my hometown um, and trying to understand people's reaction when I say, as I do far too often, where I come from. Um, but having said all that, I haven't lived here for 60 years. Uh, and I want to try and stimulate a conversation tonight uh, about the town's reputation outside the town, if you know what I mean. Um, and I want to, I'll pause for a couple, of, a couple of times, and then you can join in. Happy to have more conversation at the end. And if anybody wants to continue it, when I've gone back home, happy to give my contact details. Very happy to do that. Let me um, say a word. Why do I have this um, affection for my hometown? And I think quite simply, it gave me such a great start in life. Um, 
I am a Wigan enthusiast because Wigan was good to me between the ages of zero and 20 and has been ever since. Um, and I'm trying to think, what did Wigan give me? And I think most of you could do this as well. Um, my story isn't terribly different to anybody else's. Uh, I've listed them there, just four things, though they overlap. One was um, family. Nearly all my family were based in oral. I just pause for a moment because I've remembered, I'm sure we used to say on oral. Does anybody else remember that? It was just me. The preposition changed. I'm going on oral. Anyway, that's by the way, but I was just curious about that. They were nearly all, um, and as far as I could gather, doing a bit of family history, they'd been there for generation upon generation. So my family was, and even when I was growing up, there were miners, mill workers, nail makers, and they were very much around in my childhood. There was a regular routine, as I'm sure is true of many of you, of visiting each other, of meals on certain days in certain houses, of keeping in touch. No doubt there were um, some disagreements, but on the whole, we defended each other. Um, and nobody, but nobody, moved away from Wigan except to study. Slightly exotically, um, on my dad's side, the family had links with Fenland. Um, so I'm a strange mixture, I guess, something like three quarters or 80% Wigan and 20% um, Fenland, which I didn't take much interest in, but having moved to that, nearer to that area, um, I've done a bit of family history there, but that's for another day and for another historical society, which I haven't joined and don't intend joining anyway. So there we are. So family, I, I was given that as a great start. And secondly, education, quite simply, I, I, I think I went to two good schools and they had fabulous teachers. I, it's invidious to pick any out, but I know I got through my 11 plus thanks to a lady called uh, Maggie Cadman, and to whom I was sort of related in a roundabout way, but she just got us all through 11 pluses, quite remarkable. And then at Apollon Grammar School, um, there was a history teacher who some of you may have come across called Reg Kilner, actually Gordon Kilner, but he was RG, so inevitably he came Reg. And he had an incredible blend, in my opinion, of scholarship and mischief. Uh, and those two things together, they had a great influence on me, a wonderful teacher. So I was grateful for that. Then I put chapel. Um, and in chapel, my dad was a Wesleyan Methodist. My mum was a primitive Methodist. And they got married in 1932, which was the year, symbolically, of Methodist Union. And the Wesleyans and the primitives came together um, with a few other branches of that Christian tradition. Um, I attended Bispam Chapel um, from, I think, the day I was born, more or less, but went to Oral Primitive Chapel for specials. Um, and I, I, en I enjoyed my life there. I reflect that chapel life gave me some good Christian things, taught me to read my Bible, say my prayers, uh, sing lustily, and have a, well, I think, a fairly straightforward belief in a, a God who was Methodist-shaped. You know, and uh, well, that was good for me. But chapel life, interestingly, also taught me to play darts, snooker, table tennis, and I turned out for the cricket team, the wonderfully named Bispam Meths. Isn't that a great, great name for a cricket team? Um, and I also, and this is a more serious point, I think chapel life back in the 50s and 60s um, helped me get on in a natural way, as I hope I still can, with all generations, young, middle-aged and old. Um, it was somehow quite a natural thing to do through chapel, and I'm grateful for that. And I hope it also gave me values, personal, ethical, community, political, international, and so on, which I may not have adhered to all my life, but they're there in the background, and they make me 
a Wigan enthusiast. And I just um, did bring a book with me. There's a lovely book called A House Nigh Unto Heaven by David Lithgow, who's a scholar and a poet. Uh, and he's written this book about the chapel and its life. And I commend it. It's about 20, 30, 20 odd years old now. But he did it really well when he did it. So let me give in, begin with a statistic, a sort of statistic. I lived on the 352, 362 bus route, Ribble. Remember those? Between Wigan and St. Helens. All right? I got the bus to Wigan. I've worked out probably about a thousand times. I got the bus to St. Helens, so far as I remember, twice in 20 years. <laughs> it was a sort of non-place. Are there any St. Helens people here tonight, by the way? Uh, I've met a lady who's married to one, and I'm, I've been commiserating with her for uh, a few minutes. It was a sort of non-place. I had no need to go, no desire to go, and I think... Uh, I don't know who said, was it Shakespeare who said, here be dragons or something like that. You know, I just never wanted to go. And I just loved going to Wigan. It was my town. And there was so much there. Obviously, Central Park, Springfield Park for the rugby and the football. But also, Mains Park. We've just been again, my wife and I, this afternoon, this morning. And it, it, it was that wonderful blend of formal and informal with a railway going round it. What more could you want from a park? And I think it still is very beautiful. Um, I jotted down some other things that I loved. Um, the market um, and some of the stalls. The Santa stall where they broke toffee with a hammer. Um, and do you remember those china stalls that stretched miraculously up to the sky, it seemed, uh, and no one ever broke anything. I could never believe it, but I loved the market. I loved Smith's Bookshop, because that's gone, I know. And it wasn't W.H. Smith. Does anybody remember that? It, well, we didn't have your W.H. Smith in those days. We had Smith's, a real bookshop. Um, Mark Williams Pies, I put. Court pies, oh, wonderful, and the smell. Yeah, oh, wonderful. And the Co-op Emporium. It was actually called the Emporium, wasn't it? Where, as far as I know, I was clad, shod, and generally nurtured, I think, uh, the good old Co-op. Um, the theatre. The theatres, I think I went to the Little Theatre a few times. Then I think there was something called the Fortis Q Players. Does anybody remember those? Repertory. They were very good. The cinemas. And I was taking a peek at one or two of them today when I walked round. The dances. Now wait for it. It's one of my claims to fame. I played a cool piano in a band called the Glendale Five. But sometimes with the Glendale Four, because one of us missed the bus to get to, you know, to the, the gig. Um, and I, that was wonderful. I think Wigan gave me so much of, of, of life. It was my community. It was a place I was nourished, along with all the other things. And it's a place where I just grew. And I'm immensely grateful for it. But you need to bear all that in mind, that I've been away 60 years. Because now... Um, I want to move on to how that's affected. What are my standpoints when I look back on Wigan? In, in a few moments, I'm going to get onto the Wigan's reputation. But these are my own standpoints, which I, I will open for conversation a bit later on. First, um, I do have a lasting affection for the town. I, I may keep using that word. Uh, it is affection. Um, and it is one I feel with some emotion. I think it's the right word. I feel something warm when I think about the town and when I think about where I come from. And I'm very glad I did. Um, the second one, and this is a simple view, a naive view maybe, that I think Wigan was, is a great place. Um, I, I almost use the title pride in Wigan, but 
that's got a new meaning these days, you know, for the LGBT community. So I just put, uh, I just think it's a great place. Um, now that can be a challenge in a moment, but that's how I feel and have felt for many years. Um, the third one, a conviction that Wigan has a fascinating history and a host of achievements. I, I'll go into those in a, not too much detail, but I will say something about that in a moment. Um, and then three things which are probably not, uh, you can criticize a little bit, uh, less admirable features, if you like, my standpoints. First, I do get very sensitive about it, um, a, about its reputation. Um, when people criticize it, I do brick prickle a bit, uh, probably too much. But I, because I'm proud of the town, I, I, do, I don't like it being criticized. Um, now, the, the, the next the last one, a sensitivity to talk too much about it. Uh, my family will, will raise their eyebrows and say, oh, he's off again. You know, how long before we mention Wigan and so on. And I share with you, I am a, a, a lay preacher in the Church of England these days. Um, and a member of the congregation, of my congregation in Hitchin, um, once did a wager with me that I could do, I think it was for six months, a sermon in which I never mentioned my hometown as an illustration. You know, he wanted me to prove I could do a, a sermon without mentioning it. Now, I've forgotten how much he wagered, probably 25 pence or something like that. Uh, I think I did it, and he never paid up. But if I say he was a Yorkshireman, you will understand <laughs> what I mean. Um, but I, I do talk too much about it. I'm a bore for Wigan. And then, I've got to be honest, um, I am detached from it, unlike some of you. Um, it was a joy this morning to walk around the town with three of you, and um, I'm very grateful to see some of the things that are happening to the town, because I have not been unaware of them, but because I don't live here, I don't see its faults and the mistakes in planning that have been made and that are being made and probably will continue to be made. So I think you need to know that before I, uh, uh, as I talk. But let me move on um, to um, right, I, I want to test some of these uh, as to how you feel about them. When I say where I come from, which I do too often, and I know that, um, what reactions do we get? I've listed a few here, and I'll just try and keep them out. I, I link the first two together. I think there is a sense that, yeah, Wigan, yeah, it is a quintessentially northern town. It can't be anywhere else but the north of England. And people spot that. Um, there are other northern towns. You could say Barnsley or Bury or Huddersfield, something like that. But I have a feeling Wigan has the edge in some ways of being the quintessentially northern town. But it's actually a, a northwestern town. And there's a total lack of clarity about where it is. Um, I usually say it's between um, Liverpool and Manchester. Uh, but some people still get confused. You know, where are Liverpool and Manchester? Well, that, that, that's another matter. Um, I think a friend had her tongue in her cheek when I told her where I came from. And she said, is that near Grimsby? Uh, I'm not taking that remark too seriously, but there, there is a little bit of that around. Where is it? And then there is some mockery. Um, maybe I'm oversensitive, but people do smile when you say where you come from, or some do. Now it could be the name of the town, any combination of I and G. Uh, we have Biggleswade near us in Hitchin, and people smile when you say that. I, that may be it, I don't know. But there is a little bit of mockery. Um, I'm not going to read this out in full, but a lovely couple who, from Hitchin, born and bred in Hitchin, um, who were in their 80s when I first met them. They gave me a poem about Wigan. Um, and you probably, I'll read the first verse. Um, 
they, they meant it with the with the nicest possible motive, uh, motive of affection. But I don't know whether, see what you feel about this first verse. Well, you may know it. Folks, talk about London, Paris, and New York. And what I say is this, you can, you can just let them all talk. For I know of a city that beats all the lot. It's a garden of Eden, a beautiful spot. The air's full of ozone, the sky's full of smoke, and the pubs are all open at 12 on the stroke. And I like to be sitting and drinking my beer where the tripe ships of Wigan roll up to the pier. Now, it goes on, uh, and I, I can't bear to read the rest, um, but I think there is that mockery, which in some ways I don't mind, but in some ways um, I, I do feel a bit annoyed when people mock it and don't realise what they're mocking. Um, and then, ah, there's a mis misprint here because there's a key word missing. The other week, um, but no, let me do this one first. Surpri when you do tell people what Wigan stands for, they are thrilled to bits uh, and want to know more. And I say, I do go on a bit about it. And people are impressed. And, and I'll say a little bit more about his achievements in a moment. But then, and this is my fault, I misprinted this. Last week, talking to a local vicar in Hitchin, who said, what are you doing, John, next few days? I said, I'm going up to Wigan, going to his historical society. And he said, I've never been, but I always think of it as a town, wait for it, that nobody has not heard of. I'm afraid that's an important mistake on my part. <laughs> it's a town nobody has not heard of. Do you get the feel of that? Uh, he could have said it's a town everybody's heard of. But to say it's a town nobody has not heard of, I think that's said a lot. Um, I quite like it. I, I've, been dwelling, I've been thinking about what that really means. A town, town nobody's not heard of. But then, um, I met another chap not long ago, one of our local councillors in North Hertfordshire, and he said, I went went once, John. It's a pretty town, isn't it? And I was thrilled to bit, um, because I'm not sure I would have ac I, I would have used the word pretty about Wigan. Maybe gritty, handsome, good looking. But he used the word pretty. Does that surprise you? Um, but then walking up today, up Standish Gate, and seeing the black and white buildings on the right, and the parish church in the distance, there was something about it, which really was, I would want a stronger adjective than pretty, but it was certainly handsome. I quite liked it, and those um, took me by surprise. Um, so, this is, um, when you say where you come from, the, the, those are the general attitudes, but what do people know about Wigan, this town that nobody has not heard of, if you know what I mean? Um, well, start with the first. I think it's the obvious one, the pier. Usually followed by the comment um, that because Wigan isn't on the coast, what does this mean? And I, because I've listened to Derek Winstonley and read his articles, I can give them an answer that goes on for about three hours. You know, I don't. Um, but I do tell them about it being on the canal and so on. Because it's, it's worth saying. But then that inevitably goes on to George Orwell and his book, The Road to Wigan Pier. People have heard of the book. I mean, nobody's read it these days. But people then assume that George Orwell was a Wiganer. I found that quite a bit. Rather than a, an old Etonian social commentator who wasn't too keen on the town anyway, and was using it to illustrate how bleak England was, northern England was, in the 1930s. But people do link George Orwell um, with the town. And then George Formby. That's a certain generation, I agree. Um, but people of a certain generation know about him and sort of know he came from Wigan. Now, it can be linked with a feeling which I have to, 
perhaps I get too sensitive about, that um, wickedness can be gormless because he was a bit. So I usually point out to them that, you know, he's one of the richest men in England when he died. And in the end, he usually won uh, when he was involved in an escapade. He was usually successful. So he might have sounded gormless, but he was a pretty shrewd fellow. He was also a bit racy, um, which I quite liked. But that comes up. And then recently, Ian McKellen. I've, I've tended not to own him as a Wiganer because he was born in Bolton, at uh, Burnley, and lived later in his teenage in Bolton. But I don't know whether some of you saw the interview with Amal Rajan a few weeks ago. Um, dozens of people uh, who I know saw it and were very moved by the way in which he so naturally talked about his love for Wigan um, and how it had introduced him to the theatre uh, and meant a lot to him. I also loved his point about as he gets older, he's reverting to a Lancashire accent because he feels more comfortable with it. And I quite like that, uh, that idea. And I intend doing that when I reach 95. All right. Um, and then I've got, I'll say more about this in a moment, but the great rugby teams um, give the town an identity. And I want to try and specify that in a moment. And the Latix, not least winning the cup in 2013. That put the town on the map and people know it. Heinz. People have seen the factory, or they saw the program by Greg Wallace about the factory, and in which he mentioned that it's the biggest food producing factory in Europe or something like that. And people do remember that. Northern Seoul, I, I was never a devotee, but there are people, a lot of people, who remember that with great affection, and especially the part played by Wigan Casino in that. I put the verb in because they were Winston Lee College, a pollen grammar school. Um, and some people, uh, I don't know whether they're slightly passe now, but whenever I hear Bittersweet Symphony, um, which is a great song, I think, great bit of music, I think, ah, my school, my town. Uh, and people do know that. And then I think travel, people know it. The railway buffs know it's got two stations in the centre, which is quite unusual. Uh, and they even know that there was a third station there, certainly in my lifetime. And people who go up down the M6 will occasionally say, oh, I saw a sign to your town, John, my town. And um, some even say, I went into it. You know? um, well, that's rather nice. I'm going to say a moment about what people are less aware of. I think what you generally not know, let me do that, then we'll have this break. Um, I don't think anybody's, um, out, well, very few outside Wigan are aware that it was a Roman town, a Roman garrison. Um, though rather nicely, when you had your meeting with um, from Ian Miller uh, on that, I shared it with a lady in Hitchin, because she had had a vague link with Wigan, and she was thrilled to bits because she told me, she's now been married about 30 odd years, um, she did her courting in Wigan because her husband was an archaeologist at the beginning of the diggings in Wigan, and there was a picture of him on one of Ian Miller's slides. How about that for a link between uh, Wigan and uh, Hitchin? That's rather nice. The next one, I don't think people know that. It's the birthplace of Gerard Winstonley. Um, and you do pronounce it, I'm glad, Winstonley. Not as they do in Hitchin, Winstanley. Um, Derek Winstonley is very adamant on this. Um, if I have a gripe with Apollon Grammar School, it never taught me about him. And I only learnt about Gerard Winstonley um, in probably in my 30s, when I was in London. Um, very remarkable writings and actions. And I feel intensely proud of him. And I have been, my wife and I have been to Moscow and seen the obelisk 
which some of you may have seen in Ambassador Gardens, just by the Kremlin. If you go down the list, Marx, Engels, a few others. Number eight in Russian, Gerard Winstonley. Um, I only wish Mr. Putin would think about his teaching, Gerard Winstonley's teaching on peace and justice at the moment. But I feel quite proud that he's there on an obelisk in Moscow. Um, the Mining and Technical College, I, I'm not as well briefed on this. I, have we ever had a talk on this, um, Claire? We, well, sorry, I, I dare say we ought to, because I think I'm right in saying that there were two mining colleges of international repute in England. One was Camborne Cornwall, and the other was Wigan. Um, yeah. I think that is right. Yes. And I'd love someone to do a bit more research on that. <clears throat> But I think that's something for real pride uh, about his achievements um, from a night, um, but it did close down, I think in um, 90, 92 as a technical college. Uncle Joe's, now I wanted to put these in very aware because they're sold, as you know, uh, probably know, in Harrods and at airport shops. Uh, but the other day, I met some people from Cheshire. My wife and I met them and talk, talked about where I come from. And uh, as I do, I witted on and mentioned Uncle Joe's mint balls. And they were sure I said Uncle Joe's meatballs. <laughs> so it crossed my mind that it's probably not as, they're not as famous as they should be. Um, then I thought I'd better put that one in, Claire. I hope you don't mind. It, it, it's, uh, <laughs> But there shouldn't be an apostrophe after it's. So, sorry, I'll, I'll correct that as well. It's excellent local history and heritage society. Now, let me just pause there um, and ask my list of people being aware of things in Hitchin, have I included quite a few you would have thought of? Are there any I've missed? Yes. Oh, go on. Uh, Doug Leash. Uh, the, the, the great steam innovator who built the third uh, steam train. Oh, oh. In, yep, but Derek uh, mentioned him, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, and, and the first steam train in Lancashire. Okay. Uh, 15 years before steam. Yeah. How about that? Missed him. Aglish. Okay. Any others I could have mentioned? Anybody? Yeah, sir. The fact that it was the biggest producer of pewter outside of London. Pewter? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very famous for its pewter. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. It's a clock, you. What? What's the first word? Clock, clock making. I've, I've got a word about that, but it, yeah, uh, I'll do the story about that in a minute. But yeah, good, good yeah. And bells. Bells. Was there a foundry here? Bell Foundry, really? Foundry. Yeah, Leland Mill Foundry. Wow. Well, one of the first industrial estates of the industrial Right. Foundry. Yeah. Obviously, the bits in Cannon Court, which was sold with the... Cannon, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah I'd, I should have put that up, shouldn't I? That's rather the most obvious thing of the lot. Not yeah. just rugby league, rugby union. Ah, wait, we're coming on to that. We're coming, oh. <laughs> I'm a member of our world, don't worry, wait for that, wait for that, yeah. And, but, and what about reactions? Have I sort of covered what people say to you when you say where you come from? Most. I think there's an affection. You always get pie eaters. Pie eaters, oh, I should have said that, shouldn't I, yeah. Yeah, well, there's no wrong with that, is there? I have to, I, this is just between you and me, and my wife can just close her ears for a minute. She needs some persuading that you can have pie first course and pie second course. <laughs> Does anybody here believe that is wrong? <laughs> You're outnumbered, love. I'm sorry. Yeah. You didn't yeah. forget the third course as well. Who? <laughs> a third course. Oh, sorry about third course. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Okay. Let me then move on a bit. Yeah. Thanks. Um, 
I want to talk about Wigan's achievements, as mine said. And the two particular areas that interest me, as you may have gathered, one is the church, um, and the second is the area of sport. Um, and I will um, get on to the, both of them. Right, the church. Um, I was fascinated by a book called John Wesley and Wigan by Marjorie Swindlehurst. I think it's, um, I think it's still in print. Anybody heard of it? John Wesley and Wigan, it's, it's, it's worth reading. Um, he did come to Wigan a few times. And at first he was not impressed. He, he, he had a, a copious journal. At the end of every day, he wrote at great length. And he put, he was actually Downall Green, which is, is Wigan, is it? Actually, between Wigan and that, yeah. A town wicked to a proverb. A man accosted me with such language as would have become an inhabitant of the bottomless pit. <laughs> but later when he came back, he said, I preach to a serious congregation. And to Wesley, if you were a serious congregation, that was a great compliment. You listened to him, and he liked being listened to. Um, Methodism has played a big part in the life of Wigan and um, has produced some remarkable characters. And I'm just going to mention one of them now. A man called William Lax of Poplar. Now, is that known to anybody? William Lax was born, he's a Hindley man, uh, and he, my grandma had a, a book called Lax of Poplar, which always intrigued me. He was a Hindley man, born in 1868. He became a Methodist minister and was sent to the Poplar and Bow Mission in East London when it was slums. He became its superintendent and he pioneered the most incredible social work, a medical center, a foot clinic, holiday homes, organizations for every age imaginable, young people and old. And he became its mayor um, in 1918, 1919. He was a great local celebrity. When he died in 1937, his funeral was attended by thousands and the obituary uh, headed William Lax, minister, politician, author, actor, local, national, and international hero. Um, he was what you might call a celebrity in the East End. And I know a lady now who, and I've never met him, she's um, too, too young, but she remembers people who talked about him. And if you go to Poplar now, you'll see William Lack's house, uh, which is one of the bases of its social work uh, in that area. But he was a Wiganer, um, and I feel very proud of that. But I also feel proud of um, the next chap, Pat Keegan. Is that a no name, no name known to anybody? A, a, a Catholic, I'm Catholic. Um, the Young Christian Workers were founded in Belgium in 1912. They originally to help young trade unionists, young Catholic trade unionists, to live out their faith with integrity in the workplace. It was a very fine organization, but it never took off in England until 1937, when Father Jerry Rimmer of St. Joseph Church in Wigan um, set up a branch of young Christian workers. One of his first members was Patrick Keegan, a 21-year-old mill worker, and he became very involved in the organization. He became a national figure, um, a secretary of it nationally, and he actually became the international president of the Young Christian Workers. So he traveled the world on behalf of the Young Christian Workers. In 1965, he was appointed what they call a lay auditor at um, the Vatican Council. And he gave a speech on the importance of lay people in the Catholic Church. And I've read one scholar say that was the first time that a layman had addressed a Catholic, international Catholic Church Council since the fourth century. 
and he was a Wiganer. Now, I'd probably do a bit more research on that, but can I can amend that as a subject one day? The work of Pat Keegan, uh, internationally. He was a great man. And since we're talking about Catholics, I better mention Cardinal Vincent Nichols, the head of the Roman Catholic Church in England and Wales, whose first curacy was St. Mary Standish Gate, and he was chaplain at St. John Rigby School. And I, I've had the privilege of talking to him, and he talks very movingly and affectionately about his time in Wigan. He also told me quite a racy story, which I won't pass on to you, all right, because he is a cardinal. It was lovely. And then I put this in um, because I was reading the Church Times the other day, um, and there was a big feature on community pantries and, and the food initiatives being taken all over the country, sadly necessary. We have them in Hitchin, in, in leafy Hertfordshire. And the one that was chosen as a, one of the best examples was one um, based in the Anglican churches here in Wigan. I don't know much about, but it was, there's, there's something called Fair Klempt. Um, and the Church Times was all over it, thought it was the most wonderful thing that's ever happened. I'm going to say since sliced bread, but you know what I mean. Um, wonderful. And I just felt quite proud that Wigan was chosen as an example of a very fine initiative. And then, uh, itching spelt wrongly there. I hope that's not by me, but never mind. It's an I, um, itching. But I can't resist telling this. Um, so Mary's Hitchin is at the center of our town. It's um, been, there's been a church there since about 900 AD. Um, and it's an incredible building. It's the largest parish church in Hertfordshire. Um, it's uh, flint, and it has so many wonderful um, architectural features. And it is visited by tourists. It's very beautiful. And if you look along the, um, underneath the eaves of the church, if you can say that, there are a series of about ten gargoyles. You know, that's slightly grotesque figures, as faces. But they're quite, they're, they're rather nice, mischievous. Um, and the last one is a modern one. Put up 10 years ago, about 10 years ago. It's of a Wiganer. Um, when we moved to Hitchin, my wife and I, 30 years ago, um, we saw there was a man who was involved in the church called Frank Liptrot. And my wife said, that's an unusual name. And I said, not at all. I grew up with hundreds of them. You know. So I rang this Frank. And yeah, as I imagined, born and bred in Oral, knew my mum and dad, you know, sort of, uh, and, it, it, and knew lots of people I knew, went to school locally, moved to Hitchin to get work in his 20s. Um, and he became a good friend. And I had the privilege of leaving his funeral about, I don't know, a dozen years ago. And his family wanted to know how to commemorate him. And he's commemorated in all kinds of ways. He was a, a very mischievous man. That's one of his books, Frankincense and Mirth. <laughs> you get it, you get it, yeah. Uh, and he, he always had that sort of a cheeky grin, I think you would say. Delightful man. And so you go along, all the Tudor and medieval ones, and there's Frank with a pen and a notebook. And I, I just find that moving every time I see it. Partly because I knew him, but partly because um, it's Wigan making its mark again. Um, and there's something quite special about that. Um, I miss one little itching thing I, I, I'd just like to say about Jared Winston I'm going back a tiny bit um, he tried to set up as some of you know the diggers in Surrey taking the land in ownership for everybody he was thrown out and when he was thrown out he came to Hitchin my town 
or a village on the edge of it, and um, got a job as a farm manager. But he fell out with the boss, a lady, somebody or other, who had already had visions about her husband being killed, and he was. So when she had visions about Jared Winston being killed, he thought he'd better get out. So he stayed in Hitchin six months and went back to Surrey. Don't know why I told you that, but there you are. You can have it, have it for free then. Right, let me try sport then. Those are my church achievements. Sport. I, I just want to mention the three, to me, wonderful organisations. And I'm a, not quite a, I'm, I'm a great supporter of each one of them. And as my wife will tell you, my mood goes up and down depending on results at weekends. It's a, the Rugby League Football Club, the Rugby Union Football Club, and the Latix. And I ask, can any other town of a similar size compare? Now, you, you don't need to answer that. It's a rhetorical question. But I, where I live, Luton, similar size. Stevenage, similar size. You can't compare, in my opinion. So let me try um, down. Let me go through each one very briefly. Um, I hope you'll agree that Wigan is the most successful team in the history of the game. Um, I believe it has a divine right to be at Wembley every year. And I don't mention it hasn't been for a while, but uh, and I'm holding my breath for when they play that other team, whose name I dare not mention, um, in the semi-final in a couple of weeks' time, isn't it? Oh dear. I'm dreading that, I really am. But I think by any statistical standard, Wigan is the most successful team in the history of that great game. Um, it has some great characters. Now, there's Billy, of course, and I was thrilled a bit to pay homage at his uh, statue today and delighted to know he's still going. But in my childhood, he was the hero, as was Eric Ashton and others. And since then, there's just been a host of them. Elvie Handley, Martin O'Fire, Andy Farrell, Sean Edwards, Sam Tompkins. Now in France, but never mind. And then recently the much lamented Vaigir Twigamala. I was so sad to hear about that. that day. And the, the, the game and the team, the town, have produced such wonderful characters. And then, I, I love this thought, it's not just me who likes it. Um, have you noticed how Wigan has taken over the rugby union world? Um, Andy Farrell, manager of very successful Ireland. His son Owen, captain of England, not as successful, but never mind. Sean Edwards, coach, first for Wales and now for France. And for a short time, I think, Sean Wayne was an advisor to Scotland. So just waiting for Italy to wake up and we'll have a grand slam of Wiganers influencing the sport. Now, I don't know whether anybody else is pleased with that. I am ridiculously pleased with it. And then at the end of each of these sporting ones, I want to say what supporting them in the, in the South is like. Believe it or not, um, it's quite easy to support Wigan in the South. Um, it's not a rugby league area, but people know about Wigan Rugby League uh, and support it. Uh, there's no gentleman who I know quite well who tells me the Wigan score before I know it, and he's built a bit because its latest great player is called Field, which is his name. And he's got incredible pleasure about this coincidence. Um, but I do like supporting them in the South, uh, but it's not difficult because they're a very popular team uh, and many people know about them. Um, it's, the next one is slightly more difficult to support, but not. But I think, I, we do realise, I hope, I'm a member of Oral Rugby Club, so uh, they were the second best team in the country in the, in the 80s and early 90s. Um, and I've seen them beat some of the great names, uh, including Harlequins, 
And when Harlequins lost in a cup match against Laurel, you know the famous saying, don't you? They were beaten by a lay-by off the M6. Um, and I felt very proud that day that they'd lost. And then, of course, the inevitable happened. Um, a club with a crowd of a thousand or so can't compete with city clubs with 20,000 seater stadia and lots of money. So they collapsed. Um, but I love the article in The Guardian, I think it was, with the headline, The Village That Took On The Toffs. Um, I like that. Now, they've gone through a sad time since, and at the moment they're um, not doing very well, but they hope to have a new ground. And they've got a new name, which has a resonance with me. They're called Oral Anvils. And my great uncle Sam Cadman was the last nail maker in Oral, on Oral. And um, he had an anvil which I would often uh, see. And supporting Oral in the south, it, it, it may seem very odd, but um, I used to go to all their matches when I could in the London area. And there'd be about three of us. Uh, with amber and black shirts on. And people would say, where is Aurel? And uh, I'd explain very patiently where it was. And I, actually, to say Aurel is not too bad because it does mean Or Hill. Uh, I didn't say that to them. It would have been too clever. But I did delight telling them all about it. So that was good. But let me try the next one. Now, I think some of you know the incredible story of going from the Lancashire Combination to the Premier League. And then May 2013, I just remind you, Manchester City nil, Wigan Athletic won. Uh, I, it has nearly the claim to be the greatest day of my life, all right? uh, which we celebrated at home with them. Um, Chips and gravy and pie and chips and mushy peas and echo skates. And then, of course, July 2020, when it went into administration, which is sad. But now a wonderful rebuilding, and I'm watching every result at the moment, holding my breath. I'm pretty confident they'll go up. Uh, six, seven, eight matches to go. A quiz question which I use frequently. Who has won more trophies in the last 10 years? Tottenham Hotspur or Wigan Athletic? Thank you, yeah. The answer is Wigan, won. Tottenham, and I used that on a Tottenham supporter the other day, and he was very angry with me. No, he was uh, grumpy. But he said, try it on a West Ham supporter as well. It's the same answer. <laughs> and... I've loved following um, Wigan, the Latics, around the south of England and worldwide. Um, at one time, I thought I was the President, Secretary, Treasurer, Communications Officer, and only member of the North Hertfordshire branch of the Latics Supporters Club. <laughs> now, I may or may not be, I think there might be one other somewhere in the half million people who live in that area. Um, but it's been good. I have a very good friend who's an Ipswich supporter. If you want a test of your loyalty, to go with him to Ipswich, Tuesday night in December, watch Ipswich play Latix. It's a nil-nil draw, and then drive back. Um, and they welcomed us at, at, Latic, uh, at Ipswich, saying, uh, there are 28 supporters from Wigan here tonight. Give them a round of applause. I, I made 29, but never mind. There we are. But then when you go worldwide, um, people say, what team do you support? Taxi drivers like doing this. My wife and I were in Egypt three weeks ago. Um, taxi people picked us up, part of the tour. What team do you support? They're expecting you to say Chelsea, Manchester United, Liverpool. Uh, and we said, uh, I said, Wigan Athletic. And immediately they said, uh, ah, Amazaki and Shatsam Morsi. Egyptian players for Latics. How about that? 
It made my heart glow. That did, um, which is rather pathetic. But there we are. I say wherever we go. Right. And then this is final bit. Just one or two links that make Wigan known. You, you may be surprised. This is a non-political point. It really is. But when um, Lisa Nandi is mentioned, it often says MP for Wigan. And people will say to me in Hitchin, saw your MP on telly last night. Your MP, you know. I'm, uh, I've never voted in Wigan in my life, but uh, there we are. Um, and then there's an advert that appeared, I don't know where it's gone now, um, of a travel company that advertises Wigan to Pyongyang. Lupine travel. Are they still going? The guy who runs it is a member of the Member of? Well, I'm, I'm, in the, I'm in the presence of greatness. Is he here tonight? No. He is. No. Oh. Is he? Oh, that's wonderful. But I think in the national papers, Wigan to Pyongyang, and I love that. And then I, I love that scene in the bay, which I think was mentioned at the Timber Lakes thing. Um, the bay is based in Morecambe, you know, the, the television series. But when they wanted to do the car chase, they had to come to Wigan. I don't know why that pleases me so much. It's a bit pathetic, really, isn't it? And then someone mentioned clocks. Um, my wife has a, a cousin who is a guide to a, a small stately home in Northamptonshire. It's a lovely place. Um, and it has one of the most priceless collections of China, Meissen, and... Um, and things like that. Um, it's a beautiful collection. And as the tour was coming to an end, I spotted at the bottom of some stairs in a dark hallway, a clock made by Winston Lee of Wigan. Now, I couldn't miss the chance, could I? So I mentioned it to her. And if you go back to that stately home now, my wife's cousin will take you around and the Wigan clock is included in her tour. I think that's a, that's a round of applause, don't you? But never mind. Yeah. You. Um, and then the last thing is surnames. Um, I, I, I just, I'm on the lookout. Now, I know it's irrelevant now because people have scattered. But whenever I see Lip Trots, Penningtons, Onsworths, Cadman, my own uh, background, and I'm sure there are others. Ormisha? Are there any other Wigan names? There must be. Yeah, big people's per names, which tend to be this area rather than anywhere. Uh, Farrymund. Uh, now, Six Smith. Six Smith. Really? Right. Yeah, yeah. Standish. Standish. There's not so many Standish left anymore. No. But names like that, which we will um, with them. So, look, I'm coming to an end. Um, I'm going to pause for questions in a moment. Just one final question. So, I've actually doubled the questions to two. I'm, I'm trying to say Wigan is a great place that I have a lasting affection for. Um, but I, I think I asked myself, um, I've not put this one up, but I, I, I put it down on paper. Am I a sort of pathetic lost soul who needs therapy, uh, you know, because of my love for this town? Um, or is it something worth um, being proud of? And I think it is. And then I'm going to put the question, I may not give an answer. Um, would I live here again? Or do I prefer being in exile? And my wife's given the answer already. Um, I think because my family are scattered all over the south of England, I couldn't come back to live here. But I hope that I've shared with you my pride of being a Wiganer, albeit 185 miles away. So thanks very much. Anyway, yeah.